Hello my lovelies and welcome to this which is number six in the series on the SST265 rebuild. Now in this episode we're getting right down into the nitty gritty, the meat and veg if you will, of what makes this machine tick. I'm dead excited about this so grab the coffee, I'll send the scooter over and we'll get cracking. What? This is the bit I've been waiting for. Now, this is the massive SST265 cylinder. I'm gonna be fitting this tonight. Uh, I just don't want to uh, ruin my crankshaft there. I've just put it on loosely. Just check out all those ports. Now, if I can angle my light a little bit, maybe. Oh, that's so annoying. It's not easy being a filmmaker and a gobshite extraordinaire. But you can see. <laughs> This thing has got ports all the way around there. It looks, it's really beefy. Look at that exhaust port. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can finger ports. Anyway, so what I'm going to do first is I think I'll just place this back on here, <laughs> basically because it keeps it in a safe place. Wouldn't it be a shame if I dropped it? <laughs> Don't think about it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the uh, piston rings up in here. I need to check the ring gap. So I'll do that one. This is the piston on the SST265. It's a Meteor piston. Quality item. Um, if you don't know this, I'm going to... You probably... I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Uh, the SST engine, the Touring engine, this comes equipped with two piston rings. Whereas uh, the SSR, the fastest of the two, the naughtiest, if you will, that just comes with one piston ring. And uh, reading through the instructions uh, on the uh, CASA uh, Performance website or Rimini Lambretta's website, um, they, they actually come with uh, recommendation for servicing, which is pretty cool. Uh, what they say is, and this is one of the reasons why... Hello. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why my man uh, Odin, who uh, who owns this engine, uh, went for the SST, because what this what they suggest is on the SSR that you should check uh, ring gap every two thousand miles or three thousand two hundred kilometers, which is a quite short service interval, uh, and the piston itself should be checked every. 4,000 miles or 6,400 kilometers. Now the SST that's got two rings, uh, it's not f quite as uh, independent of the one ring at the top there. So uh, what they suggest here is they check ring gap after 4,000 miles, which is 6,400 kilometers. So that's that's pretty good. That's uh, yeah. If I, if I had an engine like this, it would be my like my uh, fun. My fun bike and uh, 6,400, uh, as long as it isn't your main bike, isn't actually that too, that bad, I reckon. Uh, and I like to uh, check my engines every winter anyway because the season is so short here. Uh, and you should check your uh, piston with the SST at every 6,000 miles or uh, 9,600 kilometers. So uh, that's uh, that's not too bad. So for me personally, that I'd probably be able to get, if I'm lucky, uh, two seasons out of a uh, piston uh, on this uh, SST kit, whereas uh, on the SSR with just um, 3,200 kilometers, ah, that's just a bit too much uh, work for me, I reckon. But that's uh, that's something to uh, uh, consider if you're uh, thinking of building or buying one of these ready-made. Right, what I'm going to do first, as I said, was uh, I like to bubble a bit, you know how it is. What I want to do first is uh, fit my piston rings. Oi, oh, shit, that was a bit too much. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Uh, I'm, I, I'm just going to measure the, the, the ring up on the piston ring. So I just uh, lube up the bore before I finger my ports. Naughty. And uh, the best way to measure uh, ring up is I'm going to ease this in. Now... I'm not sure if it's because I'm superstitious, but I always fit rings where they have like a mark on the top. I'm not sure if you can see that on the, if I, can you zoom in? I have no idea what I'm looking at. But anyway, there's a little bit of a mark 
uh, inscribed on, on the top of the ring. And it's the same with Brit bikes as well. The general consensus is fit, fit that mark on the top. I'm not sure why. Maybe because it's the bend in the piston ring itself or, yeah, something or other. It, it, I could be completely wrong. It could not matter whatsoever, but that's, uh, that's sort of the detail I go into these things. Right, so I'm just going to push this into its uh, bore. And once I've got it semi-lined up there, I use the piston itself. Uh, it's really important as well when you're uh, sh checking piston ring gap that you actually uh, push the ring in from the top and not the bottom because it's the top where the uh, piston runs or the piston rings run. You know, when, when the piston gets down here, it's you've got a vacant space where the ring actually doesn't run. So uh, what I do, I press this down just to make sure that it sits square in the barrel, right? I'm going all the way down to uh, to the second piston ring hole, and I can actually line that up. I'm a bit I'm a bit wonky. There we go. Put it at the back there, that's better. And then I'll check the piston ring gap, which I think is a little bit too small. Uh, apparently, on the instructions, it says I need a 0.5 mil, and. And it isn't. So I need to get my diamond file out on that one. Right, I've, uh, <laughs> it's really important that when you're uh, filing down piston rings, uh, that uh, first off, you, it's just the edge there that you file down. And just file a tiny, just give it a couple of strokes. A couple of strokes, my goodness, what's this? Rob's garage of Indiendo, in, induendos. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's it's important that you don't uh, go too far to town because you can uh, you can make your gaps gaps too big. So on this last ring that I've done here, I can just fit uh, 0.45. I got a really quick answer from uh, from the boys at Cast Performance, and they say uh, minimum ring gap is uh, 0.45. This one, I can get 0.47 uh, feeler gauge in there. When I put it in. So what I think I'll do is uh, I'll use this one for the top ring and I'll use the other one for the bottom and I'll just place those away and now it's time to uh, fit the piston. So next uh, next stage of the game is uh, fitting the uh, piston to, uh, to the corner right here. Now uh, this is uh, the uh, Casa Performance uh, tool for putting in those uh, dodgy circlips that you get on uh, pistons nowadays. Mm. Nice thing about it is the exact diameter, so you can actually use that to push in your uh, uh, good jump in as well. So what I have to do is uh, place uh, this over there, always arrow, always to the exhaust port, which is down. Obviously this is the reed window and the reed is up. So I fit this this way, over there. Hold it in line with the uh, little M bearing and see if I can, nice thing is with those big windows, I can have a look at it on this side. Well, biggest uh, point is trying to get that straight Rob, that's the best way of doing it. So that's the uh, little M bearing there. And now it's time to fit those uh, pesky little uh, circlips. Uh, the idea of this is uh, you load this into the tool here. I, I put a little bit of lubrication on these. I'm not sure if you're supposed to, but it just eases them in a little bit better. Because this job is actually a little bit fiddly. Let's see if I can... I just <laughs> It's a two-handed job. Let's get it in there. There you go. And you load up the tool. Like so. And I try and press... Try and press the ring. Come on, you bugger. I think it's caught on the edge there. Uh, there we go. There's a bit of a chamfer on the in, in on the inside here, so you have to get it past the chamfer. And then why are you being a bugger? Stuff never goes to plan, does it, when you film? Right, let's see if I can push that in a little bit more. Uh, the object of the game here is I have to try and get the the 
Good in Sir Clip. Come on, you bugger. There you go. It's moving. I have to try and get it uh, right on the end of this loader. Like so. And it's just a case of fitting at the side here and popping it in. <laughs> no more messing around with uh, funky funky uh, circlips. Job done. Voila. Ein pistone. Ein pistone. Before you fit uh, a nicker seal lined barrel, uh, what I always do is flush it out. I mean, first off, I had to get my horse pipe in there because it was a uh, horse pipe. <laughs> my airline, uh, because it was full of styrofoam from, uh, <laughs> still a bit there, full of styrofoam from, uh, from the packaging. But uh, what I do with all Nicosil lined barrels is I say give them a good spray with uh, WD-40 in it. Uh, and I rub the bore. So I like to wash the bore with WD-40 before, uh, before I fit these. Because the chemical process that's made uh, to put the liner on. Now, if I have a look at this, it's clean, which is nice. The last, the last one I did, the last motorbike I built with Nicosil, was my son's 125. Uh, what you tend to find is when they come from the uh, factory, is that they're full of, um, full of like a grey, a grey matter. But this one. Has already been uh, very nicely washed out, looks like. So what I've done now is I have fit the move away out, out the way, Mr. Piston. What I've done now, I, I have fit the uh, engine studs here using the uh, stud tool. I've just put a tiny little blob of uh, red Loctite on those because they're not going to be removed anytime soon. And then I'm going to fit the uh, base pack here. I've been told uh, the most common size is point. Uh, three millimeter, which is this one. So I just slide that over there. Slide it over. I have not fit the rings yet, and that's uh, just because I'm probably gonna have to have this cylinder off two or three times after I've talked it down to uh, get the squish completely correct. So I'll slide that over, nice one. Right, next job is uh, talking down these in uh, cross formation. Uh, these are supposed to be tightened up to 25 Newton meters. There you go. 25 Newton meterons. Let's uh, get this talked, talked down. Too much talk and then not enough. No, don't try and be funny, Rob. All my bleeding solder is, uh, all the solder I could find is already pre-squished or pre-compressed after uh, other engine builds. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I've only got a tiny little bit left. Uh, so this is a one-shot affair. If this doesn't work, I'm going to have to run to the shops double time. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, uh, or how I test uh, for squish, is I use actually a bit of uh, grease just to fit the... The solder. Come on. Just to stick it. Ah, it's not sticky enough. Just to stick it to uh, the piston. I like to put it in like this uh, double cross formation here. Uh, because. Oh my goodness me. I need more, more grease. Just put a blob on there. There you go. I like to use this uh, double cross formation uh, and I use it uh, because when uh, when you're testing the, the squish the uh, piston will rock on the on the gudgeon pin so if you want to put it on one side then uh, you'll get the wrong uh, squish reading so I've uh, put this on both sides this is two millimeters 
uh, two millimeter thick uh, solder. So this is the head, lovely radial fins, uh, solid looking uh, bit of kit. Uh, it seems to me the squish really is just around the edge here, so maybe that would just squash the area there. Maybe I could just uh, make a loop all the way around as well. But anyway, I'm gonna do it that way now. What I've done with this is I've modified it slightly. Uh, the boys at Rimini said if uh, if there's anything uh, they could improve on, I should give them a shout. And this is one of the things. Uh, because of this day and age when, my, when we're buying super duper engines like this one, uh, most people fit temp gauges. So what I like to do, like on the uh, RT cylinder kits, I always fit them on the stud that's nearest the, the hole to the uh, spark plug. And what I've done, I've uh, taken away a little tiny section there, I can, so I can, uh, let's have a look, fit the temp gauge here, and I can feed it out the same hole as the plug. So that's all, that's all that I've done there. And now it's time to fit this, let me put the uh, piston down there. I have to do some more talking. <laughs> That's the squish, that's the squish. Alrighty then, I had to uh, run out to the local hardware store to buy some new solder, uh, because I ran out. So let's have a look, this is the third time I've tried the squish. Now what I'm aiming for is somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5. So I'm actually um, uh, been told by the guys at Rimini that, uh, yeah, just under 1.5 is uh, is most ideal for this engine. So we'll uh, check what this is. 1.46, 1.44. It's not massively correct. 1.45, 1.46. So I think. I think if I go up a size on uh, on the gasket, it'll pop me over 1.5, and that's something I don't want to do. Uh, normal engines like uh, RT 144, 146, 146. I think I think we're going to call that one. Uh, I think we're going to call that one job done. Tell you the truth, so I'm happy about that. Actually, I got the feeling that this uh, this video is going to be a nightmare to edit. Right. What I've done now, I have fit the bottom ring. I'm just going to show you how I fit the top ring. As I said earlier, I uh, use the, uh, there you go, the little mark on the top there. My eyes aren't that good. I can't read what it says. But uh, I always have that facing up. And uh, what you have to do here is prize. There's a special tool for this, but I've never really had a problem fitting them by hand. Just ease it over the, oh shit. <laughs> Went too far. What's it doing? Ease it over the end. Make sure that it fits on the on the pegs there. And so the next job is I just uh, wipe the uh, gasket surface down with some uh, oh what's it called brake cleaner. Oh come here you bugger! I keep dropping stuff. So I just wipe the gasket surface down with some brake cleaner. Uh, yeah, before I fit the uh, fit the rings there, I've put some two-stroke oil in the ring gaps, in the groove, in the grooves. Right, so what I want to do now is try and get this out of the way. There you go. And I'll be using my uh, three bond. Let's look at the size of that gasket surface. I shouldn't really have any problems uh, getting this thing there tight, that's for sure. So I'm just going to use a bit of 3-bond here. I'm going to have to ease the gasket over there. I don't want to get too much 2-stroke uh, oil on the gasket there. 
if I can hold it like this. These studs are a little bit longer, so I have to place them on there first. There we go, slide it down. Nice, nicely done, nicely done, Rob. Nice. Um, before I fit the cylinder, I'm just going to put a bit of uh, two stroke on a rag and uh, lube, up, lube up my hole, <laughs> my bore. <laughs> Make sure that it's. Uh, Oh, you bugger. Oh, that was nicely done, Rob. Just gonna check through the, there we go. Just gonna check through the port that the piston rings. Yep, they're seated nicely. So now it's don't use a head gasket on these, just uh gonna use some three bond. Right folks, that is the uh, head button down. Uh, I checked the squish again. It is uh, 1.45, which is uh, nicely just under 1.5, which is uh, the recommended. Um, what I need to do now is fit the reed valve. Look at the monster reed valve there. I think this looks exactly the same as the one on, that I had on my SS240 that I had for a couple of years. And then the manifold. Uh, my problem being is I really need to get this uh, pressure tested, but I'm missing the exhaust gasket. I could just use some filler there, but uh, this, I've got an exhaust gasket on its way. So what I'll do in the next video is uh, uh, do the old uh, pressure test. I'll fit the electronics and uh, the video after that again, I think I'll do the uh, CASA side case, something like that anyway. But uh, keep tuned. This is going to be really exciting to fire up. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, don't forget, you can just do the old subscribe, obviously. You can buy some merch or just buy me a coffee. And I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah, ta -ra.